G'day everyone, Connor here from CW's Tech Reviews, back with another video, and today we've got my long-awaited Moto G5 Plus review. I've taken a little bit of time to do this review, but I wanted to make sure I was giving you the correct information, so let's get straight into it. Now bear in mind, I started using this about two weeks after I'd finished having a good play around with the Galaxy S8 Plus. So my initial thoughts was that it was a little bit lacklustre. But once I put that aside, the Galaxy S8 Plus hype aside, and looked at the Moto G5 Plus for what it is, I began to see a really good device with some really nice design features and really good in-hand feel to it that I was happy to use. It was comfortable. It's not oversized. It's got a nice gentle feel about it. It's made from polycarbonate, aluminium and Gorilla Glass 3. Um, the polycarbonate is a synthetic resin. Uh, which uh, it can feel plasticky, but with the aluminium and the Gorilla Glass 3, it had a fairly solid design going about it. It does have a water repellent nano coating, but that's not really worth talking about, because I just don't think that this is a waterproof device. If it's got a nano coating, who cares? Now, some elements are a little bit old, like the Gorilla Glass 3, but this is 66% cheaper than your flagship device of today. So you've got to bear that in mind. Now, one-handed use, it was very easy to hold, wasn't slippery. Now the front firing speaker on this device is pretty good. Now when full volume, I got a little bit tinny, a little bit distorted, but uh, I don't generally have things at full volume anyway, especially you just start to lose quality and sound. So, But look, it does a good job. Now I know I said earlier that this is a nano coated water repellent, blah blah blah, but I ain't sticking this phone under no running water. Keep this phone away from water. If you get caught in the rain you might get lucky, but don't go running it under a tap or submerging it in water. It's not able to survive that, and it won't survive that, and I get a little bit paranoid when it gets near water. Now I've got to mention that the fingerprint scanner on this thing is pretty fast. And I also did notice that it didn't seem to matter which way I put my finger. It always seems to register my fingerprint and unlocks the phone extremely quickly. Along the right hand side as you're looking at the, the device, you do have the volume and power button. Now these, you can tell which ones are different, but I, I always do get them mixed up when I press volume down instead of power and power instead of volume down. And down the bottom you've got your USB, micro USB port and your headphone jack and a microphone. Um, typical layout there. Um, probably could have been a little bit better if they had USB Type-C but hey I'm not complaining for the price. And on the back you've got that camera hump that uh, you just can't mistaken that for anything else but the Motorola camera hump and a little Motorola branding on the back there so overall a good quality feel for the price easy to hold easy to handle now once you strip back the design we're gonna have a look at the hardware what sort of engine is running this phone and can it cope this is a 5.2 inch display with a 67.1 screen to body ratio which means there's a lot of bezel going on, but, you know, we all love a little bit of bezel. Just because the Galaxy S8 somehow removed them, doesn't mean everyone has to. Like I said, Gorilla Glass 3, 1080 by 1920, 424 for the PPI people, Snapdragon 625 chipset. Now this Snapdragon 625 has proven itself. It's great for battery life and great for performance. So... That's something to keep in mind for the rest of this review. The CPU is an octa-core 2 GHz Cortex A53, and the GPU is an Andrino 506. It comes with 2 or 3 or 4 gigs of RAM. I got this model in Australia. It came with 16 gigabytes of storage and 3 gigs of RAM. And my model also supports NFC and is dual SIM 4G with a front-facing speaker. Now one of the stars of this device is the software. Motorola has been known throughout the last few years to be providing some pretty stock standard software which makes it fast, makes it smooth and easy to operate. 
most of us these days are happy with your stock Android. It can get a little bit boring, and this is where Motorola steps in with its own little tweaks to make it its own device. And you all know I'm talking about the double twist to open the camera, double chop, double karate chop to activate the flash, these little tweaks from Motorola to make it its own. Now bear in mind, during my review period of this device, I've been using the G5 Plus as a work device. So this means that emails, phone, SMS, notes, calendars, maps, alarms, Google services like music, internet, um, and then a secondary media device, so YouTube, podcast, camera, video, um, social media. So it gets a good flogging. Day to day, it seemed to handle all tasks really well. Anything I threw at it, it seemed to handle. Now, I, admittedly, I'm not a big gamer and I wasn't gaming on this all day, every day. But like I said, I used all those apps all day for work purposes. And it just seemed to go from one app to the other without any hiccups at all. Yes, apps had to reload, but that's what apps are supposed to do. They're supposed to drop out of memory after a certain amount of time. So it definitely handled everything that I threw at it, and it was not a problem. It was a pleasure to use. Now, occasionally there was a bit of lag here and there, but I've recently got a software update, and this appears to have fixed any of that. Now, it was a shame to see that it has been slightly neglected when it comes to software updates. So, I got uh, the March security update in June. Prior to that, I was rocking the January security update. So, you, you would like to think that for stock Android, they would be able to uh, keep the updates flowing a little bit more steadily and a little bit more timely. That was the one area with the software that I was disappointed and felt let down by Motorola or Lenovo um, but the software that is on there does perform really well. Now let's not skip over the battery of this device. Now I certainly could get two days out of it when I was using it as a work phone. Turbo charging worked really well. I didn't time it but it's quick. You plug it in, you know, go do something else for half an hour or 45 minutes, come back and your phone's charged. So 45 minutes of or one hour's worth of charge will get you two days worth of phone use. I'm not complaining about that. Never will complain about that. I'm pretty happy these days just to get one day, one full day out of a phone. So if I get two, I'm cheering. Now for the camera part of this review. Now this camera is 12 megapixel f1.7 aperture with autofocus, auto HDR and can record up to 4K at 30 frames per second. The front-facing camera is a 5 megapixel with f2.2 aperture. Let's not forget, I'll say it again, this phone is 66% cheaper than your Galaxy S8. Is the camera 66% worse? No, it's not. Is the camera as good as the Galaxy S8? No, it's not, and it's not expected to be. But it is definitely a good camera for the price range. Now in Australia I paid $370 for this that's probably around about the 250 mark in the US maybe 280 so somewhere around there anyway so definitely the camera is a bit of a overachiever for the price point. It's been awesome in daylight and in steady hands you get some really great shots with it. Uh, low light front facing camera Lowish light, I should say. You can see there. Uh, a little bit washed out, it looks like. Or maybe that's just me. <laughs> anyway, that's the front facing camera. Front facing camera in good lighting conditions. Uh, looks pretty good to me. 4K video. Rear facing camera. 30 frames per second, looks alright. 4K video, rear facing camera in relatively low light conditions. All round I would say mediocre, but again for the price point it's shooting above its weight. Now the bottom line for the Moto G5 Plus 
is that this phone is an absolute workhorse. If you've got 300 to 350 bucks spare and you want a great phone, definitely pick this up. I'm going to hang my hat on this, that this is the best budget phone of 2017 and it'll still be going strong next year. Make sure you leave a comment and you like and you share this video and you tell me what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching my videos everyone. I appreciate the support. Stay tuned for the next one and hit that subscribe button. Catch ya.